what the effect sort of uh, is that you get. Um, so there it is with um, well, actually we've changed the absorption color on that as well. But you can see it is with the uh, with three millimeters and zero millimeters. Probably need to do another test render of this with the absorption color on the same. Um, but let's let's just change this to uh, something ridiculously high, like I don't know, 20 millimeters. Um, obviously, way past this thickness of this material at this point here, and uh, test render that. And again, let's pause the recording so you don't have to sit and watch all these test renders fly by. Okay, uh, so here we can see much more pronounced the effect of, at which this uh, distance setting has. Um, you can see what I mean by it's almost like a, a, an offset from the surface edge at which absorption starts to take place. Um, and this gives some interesting sort of almost almost sort of uh, X-ray type effects really. And, and if you really crank this up to something like one meter or something ridiculous like that, it's almost like the object is transparent really. Um, uh, as you can see from this test render, it's like as it starts to cook away, uh, you can really start to see the opposite sides of the surface. Um, <coughs> So it's it's an unusual one to sort of describe really, but but you can see obviously the effect it has here. Um, yeah, interesting. It's I mean for me this doesn't look particularly uh, correct really, so I'm going to stop that anyway and put this back down to uh, three millimeters. Um, now the refraction index. It's pretty pretty obvious. It works the same way as refraction in in the layered surface editor, and that's you can see that the uh, as the light is passed through this object and it's hitting this other surface behind here, you can it's it's starting to bend the um, the, the look of that. Um, we can see that if I turn that to to one, effectively turning it off and test render that again. Uh, in fact, actually, before we do that, let's uh, let's put this back up to um, one meter so we can really see through the object. Um, and as it starts to cook away, we won't need to set it, uh, leave this going all the way through. But you, you'll be able to see when it gets past this bit here. Yeah, they say it's completely, <coughs> completely straight there. That 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 um, ground sort of checkerboard effect. It's um, it's not bending. The light's not being bent at all. So you can see it as it is. Whereas if we uh, if we crank that up to something really high like two and test rendered that. Um, it's an interesting way to test these um, these node materials actually, is to sort of get a, a scene set up like this and then just tweak the settings from, from something really low to something ridiculously high so you can really see the pronounced effect of, of what it's doing. Because um, if, if you're doing sort of small increments, it's sometimes very difficult uh, to sort of see what actually it's, it's changing really. But um, yeah, obviously this is really bending the light there, so uh, let's cancel that and put that back down to, I think it was 1.4. Um, now the gamma is uh, a way of controlling the, the sort of brightness of the the interior absorption effect. Um, at the moment it's set to 1, um, so let's just uh, see that as it is now. I'm having to do a, a render here because I can't remember which of the uh, test renders was the uh, previous setting. Oh, hang on a second. Let's just put this back down to three millimeters. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to turn this absorption color down as well uh, to uh, let's say half of that effect. Let's say 15. And that'll be our new sort of benchmark level. Uh, there you go. You can see a bit of it going on, but not 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 too pronounced. Um, so this is gamma one. You can see it's you know it looks about like that. Now if I put this to two, it should be brighter, which it is. So it really uh, that's obviously way cooking it up there. Um, so it's it's effectively just a way of controlling. So I mean imagine you get all these settings absolutely perfect, but they're a little bit uh, it's a little bit too dark or a little a little bit too bright. Now, rather than sort of changing um, any of these settings, because a lot of these are much more independent, you know, you could sort of change one setting and it kind of throws out another one, it, and it sort of um, and it might take you a while to get back to where you were. Um, 
this is an easy way to just sort of to change that uh, sort of globally if you like. So if we put that down to 0.5, uh, it'll appear darker. Um, so it's just a nice little sort of control setting, really. So there you go. It's, uh, it applies a gamma curve to it, basically. Um, let's just pause that so we can compare the two. Yeah. OK, so there we go. So that's 0 0.5 and 2 and 1. But obviously, some of the other settings will change on that one there. But you can see the effect you get. Um, but let's put that back down to... Uh, Let's put it back up to one, and let's just get that so we've got that scene to to compare with. Okay, so uh, gamma one, gamma 0.5, gamma two. Okay, so that's what that does. Uh, samples is um, basically affects the quality of the subsurface scattering, how sort of accurate and how smooth it is, I guess, if you like. Um, and basically, what this uh, I think this sort of the way this works is that, that for every ray that's hitting here, it's then sampled eight times at that point of the surface. Um, um, it defaults to eight. Uh, you can obviously mess about with that. And in fact, let's just see what happens when we put this to to one. Let's see if it makes a huge difference. And uh, again, let's pause the camera. Okay, and you can should be able to see that that's a little bit rougher. It's actually very difficult to tell, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's just ever so slightly noisier. Um, and I think reading that this the, uh, the, the documentation for this, I think uh, the samples goes up to, I think it was 15. I could be wrong there. Um, but let's just test that and see what that looks like. Um, I remember uh, it was something in one of the, one of the Lightwave uh, what's new documentation. It said something that if it's above above 15, it defaults to 15, and if it's below um, zero, it defaults to one. Uh, I could be incorrect there, so best to look that up. But anyway, the thing to note is that it affects the quality of the uh, the, the smoothness of the and, and the accuracy of the the subsurface scattering effect. And uh, let's just pause the recording at this point. Okay, so there we go. So that's 15, 1, and 8. Let's go from 8 to 15. See, again, it's very difficult to tell. It's, it is ever slightly smoother. Um, it might be worth it at some point just really cranking that up and seeing if you actually can go beyond 15. Um, let's put it back to 8 for now. Okay, so. Um, we're almost uh, through the, the basic settings here. Now, pass light inside is basically a toggle to. Um, uh, it will it's effectively pass any illumination to objects on the inside. Um, uh, obviously, we, we haven't got any objects on the inside here. So, well, apart from this ground surface here. But if we turn that off, um, you won't see much of an effect. Um, but we'll we'll change that in a minute. Um, Advanced shading we've kind of been through. Um, effectively allows the shader to see objects inside. Um, and subsurface radiosity basically means any radiosity that you've got set in your scene. If it, obviously, if you, have, if you have no radiosity in your scene and you've got that on, it will just effectively get ignored. Um, but if you, let's say, we didn't want um, radiosity to be affected, uh, effectively, I think, because it's, it's mainly radiosity in this scene, it should actually be end up being black or dark. Or nothing at all. Oh, there you go, black. Yeah. So uh, if we were, if we'd sort of lit this uh, scene with just normal, regular light from um, Lightwave, then um, uh, even though we do have one, uh, it's such a subtle light coming through, you don't really see it. So because we're using radiosity, obviously we want that on. Uh, and the same with um, uh, receive radiosity and the same with re receive caustics here. Um, uh, now, receive radiosity, I think it's probably going to be slightly different in that it just means generally radiosity rather than subsurface radiosity. But there's my advanced knowledge there. I don't really know. Um, now, we've been through reflection blurring um, anyway. This obviously, I might as well switch that off, actually, because we don't have any um, specularity or reflection on this object. 
um, but when it's on, it allows you to choose between um, uh, ref uh, ref reflecting or ref blurring any reflections from the backdrop, uh, ray tracing and a backdrop, a spherical map, which you can then choose to, to wrap around your uh, your uh, object, uh, and ray tracing and spherical map, which is usually uh, the one that most people go for. And then obviously you can change the theme uh, angle and and the number of samples. Again, this 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 relates back to uh, the same setting here, the number of samples.